Welcome to Common Ground, our new podcast where we bring together people from different perspectives. Um, not necessarily lawmakers, but there will be plenty of lawmakers on this podcast. Senators, congressmen, all kinds of folks, but also CEOs, business leaders who come from different perspectives, ideologies, and maybe talk about solutions or where they agree on some things. But with the election approaching, we thought to start this podcast, we should talk to voters, people like you. Maybe come at different things from different places, but there are some things that they agree on. And we're starting in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and we are pleased to be joined by two of those voters, uh, Sophia Fifner, uh, thanks so much for being here, and Larry Kidd. Um, you know, we're getting ready for this town hall tonight, and it's a big Senate race here. Uh, what's important to you, Sophia, on, you know, this race, but also overall? Yeah, for this race, I think it's really important because I'm really focused on supporting a candidate that, that supports civility, that is focused on women's rights, and also that's uh, really focused on the economy. Now, the economy, uh, you're a present CEO of a staffing company called Hire, is that right? Correct, yes. And so that drives your thinking about things? It does. I'm concerned about the whole employment issue. You know, it's so difficult to get employees to come to work. And I think immigration is a big, a big situation that could help solve some of these problems. So I'm hoping that the candidates will address that tonight. Um, in addition to that, obviously, I'm worried about inflation as a business owner. And crime has just gone through the roof. And has it here? It has here in Columbus and it has throughout Ohio. Um, and I think part of the problem is just the decriminalization of the minor crimes have caused some of the violent crimes. And does that affect business? Absolutely. Just recently, we had somebody come into our office that got upset and threw a rock through our window and spilled rock salt all over the place. So, you know, while it's not violent, it's, you know, irritating. and You never know what anybody's going to do. So you really have to be careful. These helicopters are irritating, too. Uh, Sophia, what about you? Do you see that as well? Um... You know, I think that that we could certainly I'm certainly concerned about immigration. My parents are immigrants to the United States from and from Jamaica. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And crime, especially lo- living in a city like Columbus, is always top of mind. But what's most important to me is character. And for this race specifically, I'm looking for somebody who can bring multiple voices to the table, because when you're looking at an issue like crime, you have to not only look at the economy, but what jobs are available for folks, what recreational opportunities are available for for individuals. Additionally, um, what opportunities do women have uh, to take care of their families and for men to take care of their families as well? So there's lots of things that I'm, I'm interested in. You know, I hear a lot about people wanting civility and wanting parties to reach across the aisle and talk to each other. I mean, is that possible, do you think, today? I'm hopeful. And really, most elections are decided kind of in the middle anyway. So I think that's where most of the um, the population sits. And, you know, probably 80% of the issues should be able to be solved because most people agree on most of the issues. It's the, the far left and the far right that just doesn't seem to come together and as a result, we have stalemate, and it just isn't effective. Now, you all may have different points of view on some issues, but there are some things I can hear that are probably pretty similar. Like, you could get around a table and, and solve something. Yeah, absolutely. So, for civility, I 100% agree. I think civility, though, starts with, one, listening, making sure that you have a table that is inclusive and diverse, and where people feel like they have a seat at the table. And then, most importantly, I also think it's holding others accountable for hate speech. And I agree that there's a lot of, uh, on the fringes of both parties, there's a lot of rhetoric that's really divisive. So for this race, I'm interested in leaders who will bring people together and who will model civility. How do you think overall in the nation with social media and everything we deal with, 24 hour news, I'm a part of that, um, we can get beyond that, you know, get to I said at the beginning of this podcast that President Eisenhower was the most bipartisan president we ever had. And he said in his farewell address that we should agree on what we can agree on first and then argue about what we don't agree on. And that's just not happening on Capitol Hill. It it takes leadership, right? Yeah, it absolutely does. I actually, one of my first jobs is working on Capitol Hill. Oh, really? Yeah. And one of the things I really liked that people didn't see was that there was a lot of bipartisanship and leadership that was happening, especially in the early 2000s or mid-2000s. And I think that we can get back there. But it takes individuals who 
can say, look, you know what? I might not have all the issues. There might not, I might not have all the answers, but I'm willing to bring diverse voices to the table. I'm willing to acknowledge that I can find the solutions when I listen to constituents, when I hear their voices, when I hear their concerns, and um, find creative policy solutions that will meet most, you know, most Ohioans. What else drives you? I mean, I heard immigration. You obviously want to get to some immigration reform, which it really seems tough to get to. Every time they do comprehensive immigration reform, it falls apart without leadership. I mean, I covered the George W. Bush administration, and he was close and still fell short. I think it's going to take the leaders in, in Washington to be able to do it. And back to your problem solvers and, and finding common solutions, I serve on the U.S. Chamber Board, and we frequently meet with a problem solver caucus. I'm sure you're familiar Yeah, sure. With. And Democrats and Republicans. Absolutely. And there has to be an equal number of each. And I really think that's the answer. Frankly, it takes guts from you know business leaders and in the general public to to endorse and to promote leaders that are willing to cross those party lines yeah. and in the vote to what's what's right and what's good for the people. It's tough in the election. Uh, when you get closer to an election, it seems like we try to stir the base or at least the candidates do to get out the vote. And so then it leads to these really aggressive ads and it, all kinds of fiery rhetoric. And eventually you just end up with a lot of anger. Uh, whereas up on Capitol Hill, the people who are really getting the stuff done are the people who fight to get to yes. Like Rob Portman was a guy that actually really fought to get to yes, even Democratic bills. Yeah, we're really going to miss Senator Portman. It's uh, so bad he's decided to step down, but you know, uh, um, as a Republican, I'm hopeful that J.D. Vance will um, win the election and be that type of leader that will look at the issues that are common to everybody. And you're coming from a different perspective, right? Yeah, you know, I'm really hoping that um, Tim Ryan will have a really successful win <laughs> and will represent Ohio really well. You know, leaders like Rob Portman, like Ben Sass, there are a lot of moderate Republican leaders that are really critical, and I just don't see J.D. Vance as that moderate voice. And that's why I'm interested in supporting, even as a former Republican, uh, Tim Ryan for this upcoming election cycle, because I believe that he can be that leader that can bring multiple voices to the table. You know, I read about um, some of the things that you care about. Abortion is one of them, and yeah. access to abortion. Um, that's, boy, you talk about a divisive issue. Yeah. When you start talking about it, it fires up both sides. It's challenging. You know, I grew up in an evangelical household that was incredibly conservative. And quite frankly, my perspective on choice didn't quite change until one, I became the survivor of rape. And then two, when I became a mother. And when you when you go through that type of trauma as a rape survivor, and then also as the, a mother, and you realize all the complications, all the processes that you have to go to, all the intimate conversations you have to have with your family, or with your partner, I think it's really important that individuals who have the capacity to have children have a choice, and that choice is made between them and their providers or their loved ones versus them and the government. Yeah, that's a powerful story. Um, you come? Do you come from a different perspective on this? Or um, I believe that the state should have the right. I don't. Uh, I don't. It doesn't drive you. It doesn't drive me as much. Uh, the other issues, the day-to-day -day issues, the employment issues, the inflation, you know, getting people to work, those are the issues that really drive me. It's an important issue, don't don't get me wrong, but those are the issues that I focus on. Now, is that something that you all see eye-to-eye -eye on? I see it as a critical issue because as a woman... Um, no, I I'm sorry, on the business stuff. Oh. Obviously, the abortion stuff. Yeah. Well, I actually think that they're connected. Oh, yeah. Because as a, a working mother, there are so many barriers once you have children, whether it be access to paid leave, access to affordable health care, access to um, health care for your children. There's so many decisions that you have, the cost of child care that prevent moms from going to work or individuals who have the capacity to have children to go to work. And that definitely impacts the economy. To me, I think that the economy is all about people. And at the end of the day, if a person doesn't have the autonomy to choose how they want to plan for their families, it's going to be really hard for them to support a thriving economy. What about immigration? Immigration? You see them? I, you know, I agree. I think that we definitely need to think about our immigration policy and our immigration system. It's not working for a multitude of reasons. 
my as I shared earlier, my parents are immigrants from Jamaica yeah. and spent. Uh, they have stories of how they'd wait at the immigration office so their entire families could come to the United States for that American dream. And I still think that that's possible, but it's definitely going to take some bipartisan work to really figure out how can we make the system work for all people and um, people who want to to come here to to have a better life for their families. Are you guys optimistic or pessimistic about where we are? I'm optimistic. You have to be. That's because you're with the chamber. You're always, you're always looking at that. <laughs> you're always looking at the upside, right? And just one more point. I'd like to um, just note that I, I agree with Sophia, especially on the family matters, because child care is now more expensive than rent in many locations. And it's an issue that we really do need to take care of and we need to address. And, you know, really, it needs to be done at the business level, but also at the federal and the state level um, with our elected officials. If you can't, if if it's more expensive for you to go to work and have childcare than to stay home, it's not much of a choice, and we need to address that problem. So. Do you think if you all got a table together and you sat there and hammered out issues, do you think you two could find some things that you agreed on and got got through? Absolutely. That's why we're going to run for office. There you go. <laughs> it started right here. It started right here. <laughs> this is your no. we're hap- I'm happy to support candidates that are willing to work. And I think that, you know, when I speak to other moms in my neighborhood, they feel the same way. At the end of the day, they want individuals who value character, value families, value a strong economy. And I, I think that there's a lot of spaces where people can find common ground. Yeah, I agree with you. And this is not Pollyannish. I'm not, I, we didn't start this to try to say it's all rose-colored and people don't disagree. It's just that there's a lot of agreement around the country, and we could stand to focus on that every now and then. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Really appreciate pleasure. it. Thank, thank you, thank so you much. very okay, much. Thank you. Yes, of course. Hold on one second. Let me say goodbye to the podcast, folks. We're going to be back next week with another Common Ground. We'll see who we can find, lawmakers, business leaders. If you have an idea for Common Ground, send me a tweet, at Brett Bear. We're going to do it every week. We'll see you then.